Hey, welcome to the new year, 2021, which starts off with a bang as the Georgia results are in. And welcome to the blue wave where Democrats will control all the branches. As of now, it's kind of like still up in the air one of the races, but it, it's pretty much over. And I have to tell you, the market's not factoring this in. People look at the S P 500 and say, wow, it's up. It's not that bad. There's not going to... There's, there's massive implications, good and bad. It's not so much where the market's going to crash or it's going to go higher. It's different sectors are going to be... You want proof of that? Look at the markets today. And marijuana stocks are up 15 to 17% each. Like Canopy, Tilray, Aurora. Look at infrastructure stocks. we talk about that later with Daniel, how you... An infrastructure bill is likely. It's going to probably be pushed early, maybe in with this new stimulus that's going to be passed through quick, right? It'd probably $2 trillion and $2,000. I mean, this is going to be a lot quicker, a lot faster. Look at cyclicals and material stocks. I mean, a lot of the cyclicals, material stocks, these names you'll find at Russell 2000. The Russell 2000 today is up almost 3%. 3% the Russell. I mean, it's like 3x what, what the S&P 500 is up right now. So you can't say, wow, it's great and everything's okay. It's going to be implications for your portfolio, significant implications. And we're going to cover a whole range of sectors later, things you're going to do, things you need to do to adjust your portfolios because this was a surprise. And there's a 30% chance of this happening after the November elections. And if you look at runoffs, they almost never win the Democrats because less people you know, are voting to the point where you might see you know, more turnout to Republicans. But Republicans usually win runoffs. Whatever, there's science behind it. You can look at the math in Georgia. I think the last time it happened was 10, 15, 20 years, whatever it was. And then yesterday, those odds were only 40%. And it happened. And you know, it's a surprise when almost every sell-side firm published reports on what to do. They published reports today. As you know, we do video now, as well as if you listen to iTunes. A lot of people like to watch on, on YouTube where we tape this. But I'm bringing up, you know, reports from, yeah, you know, this is one from Bank of America. You're looking at Evercore. Okay, all these reports, Wells Fargo, uh, you know, talks about Georgia. You, you know, just uh, the implications. These reports weren't published until yesterday because it, it came as a surprise. And how did you just report it? Jeffries, Goldman. I mean, you know, these reports are everywhere. And they're all coming out today. I mean, they weren't published before three days ago and said, when the Dem No, they said, ah, it's a slight chance that this happened. Now it, it's happened. Now they're, they're, you see the adjustments. And some of these adjustments are, are, are pretty massive when you look at them. So when I look at this and how to structure your portfolio, we're going to go through all of that today, which is important. But when I went through and read these reports this morning... They were kind of all over the place, ranging from the 10-year going to 2% next year, the Fed raising rates in 2022, which I don't think is going to happen. And they're saying that 2022 instead of 2023, because everything's getting pushed forward, right? It's more stimulus right away, maybe infrastructure and you know less stimulus maybe throughout 2021 and 2022. I, I think that's horseshit, to be honest with you. But lots of, of forecasts. Inflation forecasts, inflation going up tremendously. So there are serious implications where you have to adjust your portfolios. Now, I have one sell side report from Bank of America. And this is interesting. This was published yesterday. Talking about Georgia and Biden's proposals. So they're saying basically, yeah, this is just the F. Georgia wins Biden's tax cuts, uh, uh, tax raises, not tax cuts. I can't believe the president actually ran on saying he's going to raise taxes and won, pre in one, in, you know, won the election, which is amazing. You don't usually see that. But you know, I have this up now. They're saying it's going to take 7% cut in S&P 500 earnings. By, and most of this is due to taxes, right? Higher corporate taxes, higher taxes all around. And some say, well, that might not happen to 2022, but they say a 7% hit to S&P 500 earnings. And you might not think that's significant, but if you look at how much earnings grew after we had the tax cuts through Trump, it's significant. It's even more significant because I did a lot of research on this and went back to 2002, all the years annually, and you're looking at the average annual growth in earnings for the S&P 500 is around 7.5%. They're predicting now that's going to get cut by 7%, so much slower growth. Why is that a big deal? Why is that a big deal? 
And I'm going to give you a great resource here. If you go to, to Google and just put in fact set earnings, they come up with a report like every two to three weeks. 30 page report, absolutely for free. It's amazing. You know, for earnings junkies like me, they break, they have tons of stats compared to everything. And, and you know, when I see this and looking at what they're saying right now, it, 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 it's kind of amazing because you're looking at a market right now that's trading at a forward PE of 22. And this is above the 10 year average of 15, way above the, the five year average is 17. So you have the PE ratio here at 22 times forward earnings, which is one of the most expensive valuations we've seen outside of a couple of periods in the past decade, maybe in 2008, where earnings were crazy and people cutting earnings, cutting dividends, and also dot com. But one of the most expensive valuations that, that we've had in decades, in many decades. So 22 times forward earnings. And now we're seeing earnings growth going to slow. And if we look historically, that's usually unsustainable to the point where stocks pull back. I mean, when we see expensive valuations coupled with unexpected slower growth, which you're going to see in corporate earnings, usually we see steep pullbacks in equities. Usually, usually it's a different time now. If you want a good example, think of a growth stock that you've owned that was growing 40% plus annually and it's up 100%, 200%, 300%, uh, and, and you know, continues to grow tremendously. And all of a sudden, one quarter they come out and say, well, growth is going to slow a ton. It's going to slow to 5% annually. I mean, the stock falls 30% in a day immediately. Immediately. You lose that growth premium. You see it happen all the time. And you guys see it happen all the time. I mean, there's so many different examples. If Tesla says that their deliveries, which are close to 500,000, but if they're growing at 30%, 35% annually, I mean, you know. But if they say it's going to go from 500,000 to next year to 550,000, the stock's going to fall like 30%. And you're talking about a company's growth who, who you know, 30, 40% growth is now single digit growth. I look at the value, the, the reason why they have this insane premium is because they're growing. Yes, the battery company, I know, but not that Ford's a comparison, even though they get into electric cars, but just to show you the difference in what's going on with the market, which is insane. Tesla sold 500 cars last year as a market cap of over $700 billion. Ford sold 545,000 cars last quarter, three months, as a $34 billion market cap. And they're getting into electric vehicles. Again, not the most apples to apples comparison. We know Tesla, the technology, the batteries can be used so many different things. I get it. But the valuation discrepancy is crazy. And Tesla it has that premium because they're growing so fast. So I'm using it as an example. So what does this mean for the markets? In order to sustain these crazy valuations, because now you're seeing slower growth, the Fed's going to have to keep rates at zero forever. Forever. I don't care what people say, well, 2023, they'll probably start raising rates. If, if inflation gets wildly out of control, 3%, 4%, maybe, but they're not going to have a 2% inflation target. They're going to change it. They're going to say, ah, it's 3%, 4%. They can't. They can't raise rates. We have too much debt. You say, well, they control short-term rates. Long-term, they'll, they'll issue yield curve control. And I talked a lot about that in one of the promises that we did. That if long-term rates start going high, they're going to implement you. They have to. They have to. How can they afford to pay the debt? It, it, it's insane. You're looking at the numbers. I'm going to break them down later of how much we're spending. On a fiscal side, we're going to spend more money in the U.S. than the rest of the countries in the world combined in fiscal. Think about that. And then we have a Fed that not only keeping rates low, it's more and more stimulus coming out. I mean, we, we have a, a Fed in our government that believes a 20% correction, it's not allowed to happen anymore. We cannot see that. We cannot see If it does, we immediately need to do you know, whatever we need to do. If it's back up the banks or whatever, we can't see that, even though it's a normal course of action. Usually we extend on one end and we pull back and back and forth, right? And you adjust. And there's winners or losers. That's the way the market works. Not today. You could buy now and then buy in the day of the news and you're still going to make money because everything's going high. That's a bull market. Some of you, uh, you think you've been in a bull market the last 10 years, not like in the last, you know, pretty much five, six months where everything goes higher. You're seeing things going two, three, 300% higher like nothing. That's like dot-com era crap. But welcome to that bull market. But it's not a bull market in everything. And we're seeing that. I don't know why technology is down. That's kind of weird. You'll think, uh, you know, Biden and a blue wave is bad for technology. I, I don't get it. 
But if you're looking at, at some of the things I do get, it, it's low rates for a long time, more stimulus. And the two biggest beneficiaries are going to be Bitcoin and gold. Bitcoin started to 35,000. 35,000, 35, right when you kind of knew that Democrats are going to win. So you're looking at, at 9 p.m., 10 p.m. around there. And then one county said, ah, you know, we're tied. We're going to go home. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you got one freaking job to count vote. Ah, I gotta go home, man. We're gonna we're gonna count eight thirty in the morning when we wake up. <laughs> I mean, that's your job. That's your job. Is it? It's your jo Imagine you said that you went to work. You know what? I'm tired. I'm not gonna do my job today. Yeah, all those deliveries gotta go out. <laughs> I'm just gonna do it tomorrow. <laughs> it's awesome. It's so awesome. Anyway, don't you? I mean, the expectations is gonna be busy, and they did a pretty good job counting it right away. I mean, you kind of knew the results last night. Then it's coming this morning, and one of the races will call for, for Democrat, but the other one's gonna be called for Democrat. But you're looking at, at, at interest rates low for a very long time, more stimulus, yeah, Bitcoin and gold. And surprise, gold is down a little bit today, but it did run up into this. And you have your solars, your winds, your, you know, great sectors to own for a blue wave government, along with infrastructure, healthcare. They're going to really push healthcare and, and more money going into so many different stuff, materials, industrials. You know, while energy is up right now, mostly be, not because of a Biden win, but you, know, you have to be a little careful there too with energy, where you know, they're really against fracking. So how long could that be sustained? But we had, you know, cuts around, you know, OPEC and Russia and things like that. And, you know, so, you know, it's pushing oil prices to $50. I think it's a function of, of the blue wave or anything. I think energy is going to get hit. I'd be taking some profits in it. I mean, it's up a, a ton. And again, not sure why so many market forecasters believe a blue wave is bad news for large cap technology. I mean, these are the ones that funded the Democrats, right? This is factual. Yeah, Google, Twitter suppressed... Tons of sites, right? It, it would conservative sites, which again is fact. It, it, it you know clear agenda there, which is factual. You can look at all the statistics, uh, all the search results. How you know go vote? It, it's just the things that they put in front of you. Yeah, but I don't know why they think that's bad for big tech. I mean, you think they're going to split them up? They split them up, buy them. They're going to be ten times bigger. They might not have monopolies in social media and things like that, and Google, who knows? But, you know, if they break them up, you're going to get pieces of all those companies, and you've seen throughout history, when that happens, yeah, you could prevent monopolies and, you know, Rockefeller and things like that and railroads. But those companies and those people become, you know, they increase their wealth dramatically when that happens because now they own pieces of all these companies, <laughs> which is, you know. But anyway, is that going to happen? I don't know. I think tech might be a buy in this pullback. Yeah, we'll cover a lot of, more of this later, but but... You need to do one thing for me. One thing, which is nearly impossible, but I'm going to ask you to do this. I'm going to ask you to do this. You need to separate your personal feelings about politics from the feelings you have for taking care of your family and providing for them. It's two totally different things. Because if you invest emotionally, which we all do, even professionals do, I'm not just talking about emotionally losing money, but you could invest in Tesla if you had options on Tesla and Tesla takes off and you sold it too early, there's emotions involved. Oh my God, I only made $5,000. I could have been up $100,000 if I kept it. I'm such an, it's hard to, to, I don't care if you're a trader, if you look at charts, it's hard. You're always going to look and have those feelings, what if? What if I did this? Could I make more money? What if I did this? I would have said, you're going to invest emotion. People do, okay? But you want to try to keep that and check because you're going to miss out on making a small fortune because it's not too difficult to see what sectors are going to benefit from a blue wave and what industries, what stocks. It's not difficult. 